What yes. up, everybody? This is Music in the Bottle podcast, and today we are joined by Crystal Pelezic of Lost Found Winery. Uh, Lost Found Fawn is based in Belding, Michigan. Chris, Crystal is employee numero uno at Lost Fawn, <laughs> and is really doing some dope things here for Michigan wine, working with a lot of local producers, using local fruit, using stuff from her uh, farm as well. But all in all, Crystal, welcome to Music in the Bottle podcast. Welcome. Well, thank you. Thank you for having me here. I'm thank very you for coming excited. through. Thank you. Happy to have you. Um, before we get started into the wines, I guess, let the people know who you are, how you kind of got into the industry, when you started, how this journey into the business kind of got going. Well, um, I live out in Belden, and we have a lot of land out there and fruit on our property. So I am a person that loves living off the land. Um, I try to uh, harvest off the land, grow my own fruits and vegetables off the, uh, as well. And um, our most of my family is like that. We try to live off the land and grow our own fruits and vegetables. And um, I got tired making jellies and pies and desserts out of the fruit and everything. I was like, okay, what, what else can I do? So I went over to my friend's house. She bought a wine kit. And she's like, you want to try this wine out? I was like, sure, yeah. She's like, well, it's a little strong. You might have to put some Sprite in it. And I was like, okay, you, you may... You made liquor. Yeah. <laughs> you so didn't make wine. Juice. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Um, jungle juice is hilarious. I took a sip of it. I was like, whoo, <laughs> this is a moonshine. And um, I love chemistry. So I told, tell me about the process. And she explained the process. I said, like, okay, that's, that's amazing. And um, got home and it started popping on my uh, YouTube, how to make wine and wineries, vineyards, start clicking the butt button on youtube and i just got trapped in the youtube <laughs> vorte yeah, vortex I and yeah. i just started reading books about wine and then i started reading books about french wine italian wines french wine italian you was i think you will spend at least about 20 years just learning that yeah. overall like it's just it's crazy over there so much to learn yeah and um i was like okay let me let me grab some fruit from the property and um tweak some recipe around and I kept tweaking my wine around chicken pH and everything and um, giving some to my friends and family and getting their feedback about going back to the lab trying it over again and then they start asking for more and more and more and I was like okay this is becoming an expensive hobby and it was like you got to open up a winery I was like yeah. really they was like yeah you need to open up a winery plus there's so many awesome resources around building Ionia, Saranac with the farmers and everything. Mm -hmm. And Michigan is like a billion dollar industry in for the wine and stuff. And tourism is at least about $253 million. And my thing, I was thinking, what type of funding is going back to our local farmers? Mm -hmm. So that's one big thing. The reason why I truly only support Michigan local farmers and use their produce to make my wine and fruit from my property as well. Oh. Yep. And plus my grandfather, he made wine for 40 years off his property, but I never paid attention. I was like, Oh, yeah. grandpa, grandpa's making something. Right. That's crazy. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Keeping it all in the, like, again, there's not a lot of people, you know, one, you know, there's not, we're not farmers, but there's not a lot of people that really keep everything like, in house, you know, so to say that this is my land, I'm about to use the fruit that grows there. I'm about to harvest everything that comes off of it. If it's not coming off my land, I'm also just going to support the local farmers that are doing the same thing. Because I think when you think about the wine industry too, <clears throat> there's a lot of like, especially when it comes to California wine and obviously other states, but like everybody gets to enjoy this, but nobody knows the hands or what's going on to the workers that are coming over you know to harvest these grapes you know for these bigger wineries so just to know that it's all local support here yeah. it's lovely yep so. it is other like uh, uh, fruit wines make amazing great wine too outside just grape and stuff mm -hmm. and what my thing with my winery we really focus on not having just great wine with natural flavors we want the fruit to showcase we actually when you drink the wine you 
I want you to taste that strawberry. I want you to taste that pear, not just some type of artificial flavor in that wine. Pear? Yeah, this is amazing. What I'm tasting right now. So, Thank you. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so what do we got today? Like, what? So, what are we showcasing from Moscow? So, Farm? right now you have my Merlot right here. Um, my Merlot, I say I recommend people, if you're not a red drinker, <laughs> the emphasis, the emphasis try the right Merlot here. out. It's very, very light. It's not heavy. It's uh, light and tannin. It doesn't dry out your mouth. It's a great dinner wine. I hardly, uh, highly recommend trying it with like a bacon cheddar cheeseburger with caramelized onion with some sliced apples on there. Just sounds amazing. It's yeah. just delish. I entertain a, a whole, lot. That was a whole yeah. evening. <laughs> <laughs> bacon I, cheddar, not just a regular burger. Yeah. Bacon no, cheddar I, with the apple slices. When crazy. I pair my wines, I pair them with food. I'm going to feed you good. <laughs> so, I love it. It's dope. Yeah. Uh, yeah, this is listed as medium body, but I think it is more light. Kind of light, light to medium. Uh, very smooth, very uh, fruit forward. Super. Talking directly at me. I don't understand <laughs> why. <laughs> Talk to the camera. Don't look at me. <laughs> we were uh, coming at you. Right. Super uh, easy drink. Drinking, like I said, it's got a, it's got that smooth finish. Was there any oak? At, or... Yes, uh, American oak um, added in, very light. Um, I highly recommend if you're a type of a person that doesn't like red wine, chill it. It, it takes that dry that that dryness out of your mouth. So chill it instead of serving it at room temperature. I mm -hmm. like it at room temperature with a steak or with a cigar and for burger. That's me. <laughs> the whole thing. Sounds yeah. fire. Oh, oh, Sounds oh, like a great time. Steaks. Yeah. Steak, <laughs> cigar. Steak, cigar, and then you can go get a burger. Then you get a burger. <laughs> and a red wine. Yes. And the wine. I love oh, it. Oh, yeah. I'm out. You got a couch for me, too? Is it yeah. Hey, that? yes. It's no, over. after the pod. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I yeah. Love it. Next, I have our pear wine. This beautiful rose color right here uh, comes from the skin of the Bartlett pear. It's all natural. So I, I truly love it. It's a Cute, uh, awesome dinner wine. Very, very delicious if you serving it like with chicken or fredo, um, queso, chips and queso. It's, it's, it, very, it pairs very, very good with uh, cheese, a cheese or something. Or for people like me, don't eat cheese. Um, <laughs> almond, <laughs> your alternative is pretty good with it. So. And these well. come straight from your... Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the pears are from my property and a farmer um, in Holland. Okay. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Dope. Yeah. Awesome. Last but not least, strawberry rhubarb. Strawberry yes. rhubarb. Strawberry rhubarb. That is from my country boys. So <laughs> I came up with that with the strawberry rhubarb. So the strawberries is from Hendrick Farms in Ionia. Okay. And the rhubarb is from a farmer um, in Belding. So the the country boys they were asking for a strawberry rhubarb that tastes like their grandma's uh, strawberry rhubarb Chris and yeah. I, I brought it to them yeah. I love it <laughs> yeah first first taste I didn't know what to expect and then like as it settles in it's like oh this is fire mm -hmm. this is really it's good. very very good when it's super chill I yes. can see that. yeah, yeah I can and see once that it sure. age it actually gets darker okay yes and oh, it's really? just really that rhubarb really starts shining through at the end so what would you recommend as far as the aging limit on that um, with fruit wines, I always tell people you can let it like hold it for like two or three years, but yeah. most people with fruit wines, they drink it within a week right. or two yeah. or two weeks. <laughs> right. So, but if you let it age a little, it, it you still will have that fruit, but it, it'll change. Yeah. It'll change mm -hmm. that taste a little. Yeah. Okay. yeah. I love it. Mm -hmm. What would you pair this with? I will pair this actually with some ice cream, some type of dessert, like an mm -hmm. apple crisp or like right now for Thanksgiving, something with dressing, something savory to mm -hmm. cut through yeah. that that spice. Yeah. I love it. But you wouldn't classify. I mean, it doesn't taste like a dessert one. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. it, it, it could hold up. I think it could hold up with some fish. Yeah. Well, that could be some a, fish. Yeah. Sol a solid cod. Yeah. I'll be I'll be good with that. If you did like the salad with mm, the apple, yeah, mm -hmm. okay. oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, or a salmon with maple glaze on there, yeah. with some maple on there, some, some bacon on Come there, on or a summer salad, a little mm -hmm. summer salad with summer. some dried cherries in yeah. there. Papa Holmes, get the get the book ready, man. Nah, I'm, just, <laughs> I, I'm just here. I mean, salad, summer that's dinner, funny. Highly chilled. Come on, with man. my uh, strawberry rhubarb, I do make like a strawberry watermelon salad with that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, with mint and cucumbers okay. and yeah, I hear that all the time. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. With some feta, yes. Yeah, we be potting. 
Yeah. <laughs> Got me strolling so down my driveway. Mm-hmm. I like it. I like it. <laughs> oh, yeah. I heard of some deer on that driveway. Yeah. 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 A yeah. lot of deer, a lot of turkey. <laughs> love it. I love it. Yeah. That's what's up. That's what's up. So tell me about, uh, or tell us about uh, the name. So Lost Fawn, the name came from my property is a nursery for deer. I have abundance of deer. I literally step out my doorstep and I can have a baby deer literally 10 yards in my yard or deer would come up to my bedroom window, open up the blind there, right there. That's cool. <laughs> so, yeah, that's cool. Like that. so we just had just these fawns just always just wandering around by themselves throughout our property. And, and my husband like, there's another lost fawn. And I was like, yeah, there's another one. He's like, that should be the name of your winery. Mm-hmm. Lost, lost fawn winery. Like, that's yeah, fire. That's tough. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's dope. That's, tough. that's interesting. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. That's you said he was man. right. Because mm-hmm. usually it don't, roll, it don't roll like that in yeah. marriages. But yeah, he was right that time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yep, yep. Mm-hmm. I let him have it. I let him have it. I, take that out. Don't say that. I was telling him he was right. He probably asked for a copy of that. Right. Yeah, I love <laughs> but it. Don't he said worry. I was right. Was there another name before you started with Lost Farm? I was going to name it after our name, the Pelzac. Um, but my last name's a little hard to pronounce the name for people because my husband's he's polish yeah. you probably uh recognize what some of my wines gersa that is pear and polish so that's mm, okay po- yeah that's pear and polish our raspberry that's savoni that's red it's okay. say red and uh raspberry and gupa that's apple yeah I love yep it. so we do got oh, some yeah. polish wow. in there because his family was a huge influence when I was trying to get this kicked off and they were like my cheerleaders like, oh yes, you have to do this. So I put a little dedication with them on there. And also my friend, my Chardonnay, Stacy Chardonnay, that's the name of my friend that that's got great. me into yeah. the wine. That's so dope. she's excited, that's especially uh, some of the wines are at two grocery, uh, two stores right now. And she's like, oh, my wine, my name is yeah, in the store. So, <laughs> yeah. That's what's up. What Polish food would you mat, would you pair with, with these wines? Oh, from your experience. Oh, yes. Yeah. So, because <laughs> I had to learn all like Blunkies, uh, Pierogies, Kunskis, yeah. yeah. So I had to learn. So, um, Pierogies, I highly recommend with the pear wine. Something heavier with the uh, Merlot, I said I'll recommend the, Blun- the Blunky because with the stuffed grapes, the meats, okay. the rice in there, you want something heavy, that's good to pair with that. With this one, I said Kunsi's a nice dessert, little pair with it. You can do like some type of apple dip with it. Okay. Yeah, so cream cheese. Mm. Yeah. I feel like that slept on in West Michigan. Definitely the <laughs> Polish food here. Yeah. 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 Oh, like, yes. Yeah. I wish there were a Polish restaurant a good one in west michigan um this family they're really pushing on me they was like when you open up your tasting room you are going to have polish food that in there makes sense yeah <laughs> yeah yeah makes that'd be sense. huge for the tourism too out that way mm-hmm. most, definitely. most definitely um we've we've been on this podcast before we've talked to some other women uh black women at that uh that happened to make some dope wine here in the state yeah shout out to nicole yeah um, facts Yes, Shout she's been awesome. Mine. Yes, yes. I mm-hmm. talked to her. She's amazing. Yeah. Yeah, she does her thing. Crystal. Yes. So I am the second African American female winemaker in the state of Michigan. So um Love it. funny thing about it, I, it didn't hit me until um God, I say about last year. Um, cause I was really, really wanted to focus like on the wine and just myself and my friends like, you better shout that across the state <laughs> of the, Michigan. She's like, state. yes. Um, cause you're, you're breaking down those walls. And I was like, oh, I am truly doing that. But, um, but it's amazing. Um, especially I want to introduce more women and more minorities into winemaking because, Right now in our culture, we're used to Moscato, something sweet, or or Hennessy. Hennessy brand. I do like my brandy. I don't want to knock on that because uh, right. Buffalo Trace, that's my jam. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I've been old fashioned. So, um, but we uh, tend to go to something more sweeter and stuff. And I want to show other approachable wines. Like, hey, there's other good wines besides a sweet Moscato or or a super um, late harvest wine and stuff. There's other yeah. good wines yeah. out there that you will enjoy. It explore your um, your palate. So, 
I, I love think it. these two wines that I've had thus far, I haven't had the rhubarb yet. But you want to try to pair? Please, yes, please, yeah, yes, you have to try to pair. Respectfully, I want But even the pair, like even like with this, and then even like with the skin contact, like it adds Thank that you. that tannin, like that slight tannin structure. You get a little bit of that drying feel. Mm-hmm. So for someone look at that. I, we all grew up drinking Kool-Aid pop, Kool-Aid jammers, Capri Suns, whatever the case may have right. been. Uh, oh, so, I love that. Oh, I love that. You know, so we <laughs> Sorry. Just, tang. So, I, do, I grew up drinking Tang. You're not going to disrespect Tang. Me. Um, I'm just saying. I'm going to take you guys back. I did not have Tang. High C, right? the Ecto. Ghostbusters. Oh, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. In the metal can. Yeah. Yes. Oh. Metal can. Metal can was crazy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's right. No. Yeah, that's where I was at, too. Yeah. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> Electrolytes. Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. That's what's up. But yeah, so we all like grew up drinking all that stuff. So naturally, like, like I think my first wine that I liked was a late harvest Riesling or something, or maybe it was Moscato. But having these options that still have a little, that have that sugar that people want, but also now you get to try, oh, this is sweet and dry. Like, mm-hmm. It's a mix of both. So super cool. This is, this is my, actually, this is my favorite. This is like my summer drink besides the uh the raspberry i love the raspberry our raspberry i wish i would have brought that along it's literally it tastes like you putting a fresh raspberry in your mouth mm-hmm. like you walking down that summer path you left that you left that <laughs> you left that back home that sounds well, great well he said only a certain many i i make a total of 14 it. different wines don't listen to him yeah next 14. time bring every you know, bottle to bring the one she bring wanted every bottle you out. got hey. in the tuck <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Bring every you know, we bottle. Did the whole taste we could have. We could have had a full table of wine. We got part two and three. Yeah, yeah. You're right. <laughs> bring yeah. them all out. Yeah, next time. Yeah, because uh, my apple wine is so delicious, and oh, the blueberry is delicious, warm. There. In. No. <laughs> <laughs> we need wine. to rewrite yeah, these bylaws. The apple wine. I was like, no, I'm gonna bring something I actually, different. <laughs> I actually said the apple wine. I was like, the okay. apple wine was taking That sounds <laughs> fire. <laughs> That yes, sounds crazy. Yes, because our apple wine is made by five different Michigan apples. Um, one of the mm. farmers that we use is they work with Gerber Baby Food. So wow. wow, that's huge. You know, we just like gifts too. So you know, we ain't gotta really talk. We can just <laughs> drink it off pot. You know, yeah. Christmas is. Yeah, Christmas is. <laughs> that's dope. It does yeah. dope. I love it. I love it. Um, so I know you've been at the Fulton Street Farmers Market. I got to see you at Crushed Grape as well. I know you got a couple skews in there. Where else can people find you? Or like, where where is Lost Pond? Do they hit you in the DMs directly and say, "Hey, I want to try this," or do you direct them to the market? You direct them to this place or that place? Where else can people get your stuff? Um, so, um, like you mentioned, we're at the Fulton Street Market. We're there um, um, every Saturday from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. Right now, this is the the fall season that we're in. Um, Come December, I'm going to be every other Saturday because that's my vacation time. Like <laughs> I, I, I got to take a break. Yeah. And um, you can find us at the Crushed Grape. We're at Leppings in Belding, Michigan. So I'm, I'm excited that supporting our locals. Um, and then also you can order online. We ship all over in Michigan. And you can order online and pick up on our property too to get uh, get some bottle online. And like people, people like doing that because they like seeing – the scenery of our pro- our property. Beautiful space. Beautiful yeah. space. Love That's what's up. Yeah, you so. missed it. It was it was nice. He was. <laughs> It was nice. We was on top of the hill. We had the picnic, and it was he had his beautiful scenery, of green grass. Chris, you're here right now on the podcast. (laughs) Just when did you go? Is it really missing, or was it just? Did you? Because you're looking the wrong way. I just want to know what calendar date did you go to? Where was I? Did you? I did. I didn't even know. I didn't even know we were going there. Yeah, it sounds like exclusive. Yeah. No, I mean it wasn't. Yeah. I guess we can call me. And Wayne lost pawns. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> mad loss. Actually. Yeah. <laughs> no, like I, you know, like it was just a DM conversation oh, okay. and like yeah. a last minute, like, oh, are yeah. you available this day? Right. And then I was like, I know yeah. Daryl is in Austin right now. Mm. I knew Wayne was in Brooklyn. Mm. I knew Marcus was at work. So mm. like, I just like, kinda, oh, he played yeah. it all out. Yeah, yeah all the way down to Marcus. Yeah. It's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> so I just. I just kind of made the executive yeah, decision. Yeah, no, I got just it. Try yeah. the wines, you know. For sure. Guess that's what executives do, huh? Neighborhood yeah. wine dealer, right? Oh, okay. I can vouch for the neighborhood wine dealer. Yeah. Yeah. All right. You know. So. You got it. <laughs> well, okay. you guys got an invite to the yeah. property. Thanks. So. Yeah. Glad someone did it. <laughs> appreciate it. Yeah, it's much appreciated. That's cool. Yeah. 
Yeah. We'll keep our DMs open. Just yeah, in case just in case you funny can, business happens. You drink yeah. some wine, drink, smoke some cigars, and My watch bad, the was, watch nature. Yeah, yeah. I was just out of town and I was trying to get nah, it. On I, get it. I get it, bro. I get it, man. Sorry. Right. Sounded like it was on the schedule. Yeah. Sounded like it was last minute. Huh? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, Crystal, thanks for being hard to be a part of being a part of the podcast. Me, this is yeah. great. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Oh, well, We're all about inclusion here. Yeah. You know, that's all it is. Apparently. <laughs> big happy family is what we go for. Most of the time yeah. it's a success and other times it's a failure. You know, but we're, what's important is that you're here with us and we want to hear what do you have planned for 2024? So 2024, I'm hoping to get in two restaurants, um, mm. some more uh, retail stores, um, um, some more farmers markets, uh, branch out more, um, tell people about Lost Fawn, myself, our family, what, what's our mission, what we're trying to do in the local community. And um, hopefully by then, late 2024, I have a tasting room for uh, people to sit and enjoy the wine and have a good conversation because that's one thing I love to do. I love having conversation, food, drinks, and having a good time. Do you... Uh... Do you plan on utilizing your property then, or what? The... I would love to, but that's my husband's sanctuary. Uh, yes, that's <laughs> yeah. mm-hmm. yeah. his sanctuary. So, mm-hmm. yeah. I get that though. Yeah, like for real, because this it is kind of like that's your house. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like, you know I live here. I told him said people could be way on the other side. Hundred percent. Wait, you can't even hear me. Yeah, yeah you got to send oh, the dogs yeah. to come find me. You be at, yeah, yeah. You be at home trying to convince them, huh? You be, you be <laughs> working here. Yeah. We got this spot. We had this right conversation a hundred times mm-hmm. now. This is a beautiful piece right here, it. one acre we in this, this corner. Yes, yeah, it just takes <laughs> one building can go up here. Mm-hmm. Throw everything off. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, and I, I appreciate that. I respect that. I mean, he's let me do what I'm doing right now on the property so yeah. let him have his his kingdom yeah it's valid yeah it's valid. i love it. definitely it's that's what's up and we All appreciate right. you coming by you gotta give them give flowers when they're where they're due yeah, yeah sure thank you yeah, thank you so much off. i i love what you guys are doing i appreciate you bringing me on the podcast i mean continue to do what you do yeah thank you yeah, thank you much. thank you all right we got you on here so <laughs> thank you so right, much we're doing dope things we have happy to have you yeah of course of course Let's get it.